member states, Netherlands, Belgium, China, Japan, US, and Nigeria, and laying that as a groundwork of how can we distinguish between value-added processes and waste management activities. And it seems strange that international waste management regulation, it is one of the biggest barriers to circularity because of the incredible cost if it's viewed as waste management. The other thing we're looking at is uh, a safe platform for transfer data. And I believe it's interesting with, with the crisis of climate, we also have, can match it with the availability of data. 80% of all data has been created in the last two to three years. What we've not done is figure out intelligently, well, what does that tell us in terms of effective financing, in terms of global instruments? We have this opportunity, and we heard example before about a waste platform. So we need to really look at end-to-end -end traceability and lifecycle-based analysis to really reveal what are the most effective opportunities. And I'm not gonna criticize you know, going back to the Rio Agreement of a few years ago, about 20 years ago, I would say a lot of soft stuff was done that really didn't change fundamentally the economic system. So I would really underscore the real value of data, data traceability, and looking at lifestyle-based approaches, really understand, and, and really uh, look at whether we are effective or not in some of the experimentation we're doing. So. Thank you. I, I will go back to Ms. Nikos.